if you recall from our previous lectures, we saw that if we had a neutral conductor AB, we can charge it positively or negatively through induction. Now, if you are asked to perform the same, that is, charge the conductor AB positively or negatively through conduction, how can we do that? Well, in this lecture, we shall find that out. Now, again, initially, we have considered a case where conductor AB is neutral. That is, the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. And as you can see from the picture, the number of negative charges is equal to the number of positive charges. In this case also, the conductor has been placed on an insulated stand so as to prevent the charges from flowing down to earth when we don't want them to. So at first, a glass rod is rubbed with silk and what happens is the glass rod becomes positively charged and silk becomes negatively charged. Now with the help of this positively charged glass rod, let us see how we can turn the conductor into a positively charged conductor. With this positively charged glass rod, so when we bring in this positively charged glass rod and touch it to AB, the electrons in AB are attracted and they move into the glass rod. You will notice that not all the electrons in AB are moving in. In AB, there is a deficiency of electrons after conduction and an excess of positive charges. So we can say that since there is a deficiency of electrons or an excess of positive charges, the conductor AB is getting positively charged due to conduction by the positively charged glass rod. And thus, we obtain conductor AB that is positively charged. Now in a similar manner, we can charge conductor AB negatively. So even then, in that case, initially we consider the conductor AB as neutral, where the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. Now in order to charge the conductor negatively, we have to bring in a negatively charged rod. So in order to do that, we rub an ebonite rod with fur. Now we know that when ebonite rod is rubbed with fur, ebonite gets negatively charged and fur gets positively charged. So when this negatively charged ebonite rod is touched with conductor AB, these excess negative charges or electrons flow into conductor AB. Now as you can see, the conductor AB has an excess of electrons. So due to this excess of electrons in conductor AB, conductor AB gets negatively charged. So even when the ebonite rod is removed from the conductor AB, the conductor remains negatively charged. And as you can see, in this case, through conduction, we have obtained a negatively charged conductor AB. So we saw through conduction how we can obtain a negatively charged conductor and positively charged conductor. In the case of conduction, if we bring in a positively charged rod, then there will be a deficiency in the conductor of electrons. Due to this, it will get positively charged. And if we bring in a negatively charged rod and touch it to the conductor, there will be an excess of electrons in the conductor and it will get negatively charged.